discussion on performance but re with regardless uh, with regard to what we are going to talk about today is that we are going to tell you how to look into the tricks that people would play to deceive you regarding performance so uh, it's definitely relevant so that's why I, uh, I pulled it up so but before we start it's always good to remember uh, to remind ourselves where we are coming from so um, the last lecture, well, the previous two lectures, we learned the CPU performance equation. Uh, the, execution, uh, the performance is the inverse of execution time, and execution time means the number of instructions in a parallel width, the cycles per instruction, and the cycle time. And the speed up, there's only one definition in the world of computer architecture that uh, if you want to say the speed up of y over x is typically the execution time of x over execution time y. That's the only definition. And there are many factors that can affect the execution time. However, as you can see, programmers, they are you guys are the most important in a way that you your names are everywhere. And um, later on, we introduce another law. So uh, first of all, I think uh, computer architecture is a relatively easier class comparing with other other class in a way that we don't have that many laws, we don't have that many equations for you to remember, uh, except for the performance equation and this MDOS law, and we are almost there. We are almost done. 
right? So what is m dot oscillator about? It's talking about like the speed up is, uh, is a factor of, uh, so if you have two inputs f as the fraction of time that an optimization can apply on, and as the speed up that an optimization can achieve on the f part that we just put, then the speed up will be uh, 1 over 1 minus f plus f over s. So some of you will feel very confused that, well, wait, 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 wait. you just said that there's only one definition of speed up. How come there's another speed up from another law that's also introduced in the textbook? But if you look at why, how, how, we, how we derive uh, the m dot law, it's actually equivalent in a way that the m dot law is nothing uh, spatial except for we rescale the total execution time from the original execution time to 1. And with, with, with respect to that, you will see that if f fraction is affected, then um, the, uh, the, the, the optimized execution time uh, will be f over s. And the, the part that remains the same will be 1 minus f. So the new execution time will be 1 minus f plus f over s. And the original execution time will be 1. So the speed up still follows the same definition. But why do we want uh, um, uh, m dot so in this way? We are going to talk about why. How good is this one? But uh, last lecture, we have talked about that you can apply m dot law in multi pole optimizations as well. And here is a, an overview of how it works. So today, we are going to continue our discussion on m dot law. And as you could imagine, since I bring up that. Uh, we brought to the topic of uh, applying m dos law on multiple optimizations. So why don't we continue uh, with this question that uh, is an extension of a question that you saw from the previous lecture. So now you have a few minutes uh, um, uh, in the uh, individual thinking process. Come up in 15 seconds.
5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time is up. Okay, so now why don't you go ahead and discuss with your friend within two minutes and both again. So that's how you know you guys are done. Like you guys are more, more, more leaning to D, and what about P before discussion C? So some of you switch from C and D, right? So, um, so it seems like the discussion does affect your decision, right? So let's look at uh, let's look at uh, how you derive this answer. So, is there any of you uh, can share your thoughts about how you get the answer? Like, how are you going to apply and does law on this question specifically? Okay, what's your name? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, first, I apply the after your equation. We revert uh, one uh -huh. above the line. One above the line. Okay, and very good. One above the line. And what's put in there? The first uh, element we refer to one minus zero by. Then, then minus zero plus five. Okay, so why 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 put these two numbers? Because we uh, just want to just divide. There is uh, actually does not exist uh, uh, any other time that is. Uh, yeah, but why why this uh, zero point zero zero point zero five? Because that's uh, five. Of time uh, because uh, actually that is uh, calculated from one minus. Mm -hmm. uh, and what does it represent? It represents that five percent of the time is spent in the software overhead. Okay. So it's actually the operating system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And how about this 95 percent? Think from the sentence that 95 percent of the time is accessing of the HDD. Uh, Right? Yeah. Okay, so now what's next? We use parentheses to uh, to contain the previous one. Okay, what's the. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, 0 0.05 over. 
one point that means we accelerate the learning by 100 faster. So, why is that? And then, uh, I thought zero five. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. I just mistaken the knowledge. Over to you. Yeah. Okay, that's it. That's it, right? So, so here's the thing, right? Look at this this one, right? This is how we arrive, right? And um and it would be nice that if you could uh when when you are answering this question, you can also say like uh you can have some kind of formation saying that you know like this is the uh like f1, f2, and f1 represent a fraction of time spending in the software, and f2 spend uh is the time you're spending in uh the hardest drive before you direct jump into this equation. But after you <laughs> replace the f1 f2 with this in this equation you will figure out this is the number that you should you should put in and if you calculate that right you will figure out that well it will give you uh about 29 times speed up so here's the thing right another thing that you might feel like huh, uh, like okay it seems like i have something that can speed up 100 another thing that i can speed up two twice right but how come i'm not getting a speed up like 200 Right, and in fact, I'm slightly like I'm just like getting like just thirty percent of the uh, thirty times of the speed up instead of uh, the expected speed up. Right, so uh, so here's the thing, right? If I okay, so now I I you know people are greedy, so we always want to have more speed up. So now I already have. Uh, uh, after after flash SSDs, right? Like uh, if you look at uh, the the graph I put here, right? So, uh, well, I, I should make this clear. But the thing is that uh, with the yeah, with a with a flash SSD, right? You are able to change the execution time like this. So a lot shorter. But people are greedy. So uh, within this uh, revised execution type, there are eighty-four percent of them are software overhead. So now my question is that you know people keep saying that uh, we have new like uh, memory technology that can replace the flash a chip twice speed up, uh, and we want well uh, you can replace and we want to use that to achieve twice speed up in loading map. What the new technology needs to be best. Like how fast it needs to be, so that's the question. You're replacing the flash. Yes. Well, read read this question. Yes, we are replacing the flash. All right. Individual thinking equipment.
Alright, let's wrap up in 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. Okay, so now I guess it's probably a good time to discuss with your friends for another uh, minute or two. Go. So, uh, discussion it's e what's about before discussion okay also e so you guys didn't get it so um so since after discussion both of you still agree it's e so i am thinking about like can some of you share your thoughts with us why do you think it's e? what's your name uh so okay so Try to solve this equation, you'll figure out today. Right? You will figure out that you know the x is something like smaller than one, right? And from 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 your you know like very like like your 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 own judgment, you will figure out that how come could this be true? Because suppose it needs to be faster to achieve twice the up, right? However, here it tells me that I have to be slower to get twice the up. So that doesn't make sense, right? So the question is that uh, the answer is that well, none of the above will work, and like, and this answer also doesn't make sense at all because uh, can like if you want to get speed up, but it tells us that you know you actually have to do it slower, right? Well, sometimes it may be true, but you know, but in in a world of computer science, it may not be right. So how 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 how? How how this could happen, right? So it comes to the reason why we want want to talk about M dos law. And the first corollary of M dos law is about this. 
the, the maximum speed up is bounded by speed up. So first of all, we apply uh, M nozzle again, and if you want to achieve maximum speed up, it means that you have some like you know like like uh, spatial techniques that can allow you um, to achieve infinity in, in, infinity speed up, right? It's in, like enormously large, so we put infinity there, right? So you can say, well, I have something that can achieve infinity speed up, and so the f over s part will be f over infinity, right? And then if you real if you do that, you will figure out that this part is very close to zero, right? So then uh, the maximum speed up you can get is actually one over one minus f. The first implication of m nozzle is this, right? You can use m nozzle to estimate if it if if I do my best, if I invest all my life to do this, can I ever achieve the goal? Right? Is it worth doing it? Right? So here's the thing, right? So if you look at the question again, the maximum speed up we can get by optimizing the storage part is only 1.2 times. And somebody asks you to speed up it by twice. Does that make sense? So here's the thing, right? One day, if you're an employee, if one day your boss, your 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 manager is asking you, hey, like Daniel, I feel like you are a very, very good employee. And I want to get you promoted. However, uh, before I can promote you, I really want you to achieve a very important task is that, well, assuming that you are working for Square Enix. And uh, you're both saying that, you know, like we 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 have to think about like how can we uh well and how can we produce a machine that improve improve the loading process. However, the only thing you can do is to optimize our uh storage technology in this arcade machine. It turns out you you did an end nozzle, well you figure out no, it's not possible. Right? Because the best you can do is 1.2 times. So one thing you should learn at this point is not try your best to achieve the goal your boss wanted you to do. Instead, you should be well prepare your resume because your boss is actually asking you to leave. Right? So 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 if you know M Dosso, you know what's the implication behind your boss in a way that oh he does not actually want to promote me. He actually wants me to get another job. So that's the that's the first corollary of endosol. Now, uh, so so from endosol, you know that twice speed up is not possible. So none of the above, right? And in fact, right? If you look at uh, if you look at uh, so there is a technology called PCM, and the te uh, the PCM technology phase change memory. Or an, an uh, implementation, or say the technology that's based on PCM is called 3D cross point memory, and um, that's the term used by Micron. And if you you uh, if you are a believer of Intel, they call it optic memory. So you've probably heard it like a few years ago, but then now uh, the sad story this year, earlier this year, is that Intel and Micron they both deceased the project because turns out. It's running into this issue, right? So uh, it turns out that well, you know, we the, the software overhead is this well in, in 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 the era of flash memory, we already bring uh, the hardware overhead uh, down a lot, and the software overhead is so significant in a way that it makes the hardware technology no more that important. Right? So then it turns out that well, if I spend a lot of money. Like twice, uh, triple times more expensive in my storage technology. However, this is the speed up. This is the portion of the execution time that I can reduce. It doesn't worth it, right? And as a gamer, we always feel like you know, getting a better GPU, right? So that's why you see a shortage on Nvidia GPUs rather than a shortage on the flash SSDs these days, right? So, um, yes, question. Isn't there a shortage of processing speeds anywhere because of people using it to like buy cryptocurrency? Uh, say again. Is a shortage of what? 
uh, SSD because of like cryptocurrency mining? No, well, critical uh, cryptocurrency mining. I think uh, it actually caused a shortage of. Um, I would say hard disk drive more than the SSD. Oh. Right, because uh, well, we we can talk about this later. But if you took my, if you are going to take my CS two hundred two, you will, I will have a lecture on SSDs as well. Uh, what I'm going to let you know is that the Flash SSD, they are probably not the best for the uh, perpetual uh, mining in a way that it has limited uh, amount of lifetime. So uh, economical, economically, it doesn't work it. All right. But good question. Uh, all right. So this is uh, an implication from MBOS law. So now, right, another corollary uh, based on the multiple optimization, we talk about the multiple optimization. Okay, saying that you are not working for a big company like Google, right? You only have one, uh, one, one engineer can work on the project, and you know the time of a project uh, of an engineer is limited. So the the engineer can only optimize for one thing, right? So now, if you can only do one thing at a time, if you can only do one thing at a time. What, what's the most uh, important thing to do? And also tells you that. So here's the thing, right? You can use this speed up next to estimate what's the part that's worth investing in the most, right? So then you will figure out that, you know, the one will give you the maximum speed up should be the one that I should focus on, right? If, if I can all achieve the, the, uh, the same amount of speed up, right? So that's the, that's the calorie. And the, by applying the first calorie, you get another calorie is this. Make the common ca case fast, right? So if I, if I, if I can only optimize one thing at a time, if I can only make a computer better on one thing, what that one thing? It should be the most common case. So that's why, and this is actually, this, so this end also, I mean, although this is a computer architecture class, but right now I feel like I'm doing a GE class because um, in some sense, end also applies everywhere in our life. If you see the decision of public policies, you will figure out that most of the time, when the government is trying to make policies, they always figure on, uh, uh, like focus on how to make the common case feel better, right? Like, uh, uh, which means that uh, whoever gives that uh, most, uh, the, the hugest amount of votes. Right? So that that's also that's that's also an, an, an analogy like this, right? So it also doesn't work. Uh, the, not only works for the world of computer architecture, but everywhere, right? And uh, the thing is that the common case will change every time, right? When you change the dynamics of it. So that's why uh, when we are talking about how to make a fair comparison, it's always important to make sure that only one thing gets changed at a time. Because every time when you change something, the end also, uh, you have to reapply the end also again. The most common case can change. So, some of you might be interested about, okay, how can I identify the uh, most uh, common case? So one demo that I can show you is probably, uh, we can use this thing called GPROF. Uh, this is, uh, uh, so the, the answer is that in, in this, uh, we, we, uh, fortunately nowadays we have performance counters. We have a lot of profiling tools can help us uh, dealing with that. So. The first thing that I want to say is, uh, let's have a demo, and uh, let's see what can I do. Uh, so huh, we can hmm, which pro which is a better one. So say. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, uh, okay, G Pro. Uh, 
I have a program, sort CPU, and uh, saying that I want to uh, get. Um, give me a num number that you want to sort. How many numbers do you want to sort? One billion. One billion. Okay. You really don't like the class, right? <laughs> oh, you know one thing. Forgot. Uh, when I compile this program, right? As I said, I have to attach. I have to attach the the flag code dash pg. Right. Clean. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Let me double double check that again. No, that's not it. Yeah. Oh, not sure how much time it would take the processor to do it for one billion, but it has to be a lot of time. Just, oh, no such file. Directory. <laughs> that was pretty quick. Yep. Let me see. Uh, okay. What was the command line? The command line is number of elements. Now that should be correct, right? Okay, we just cheat it. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's just you know sometimes. You have to follow the script, right? Don't. <laughs> okay, here we go, right? It works. <laughs> yeah, next time I will give you the script before the lecture. <laughs> okay, it will take a while. It will take a while. Yes. Uh huh. He cannot see. She cannot see this. Yeah. No. Okay. Interesting. Because my OBS saying that I'm on this. All right. So well. So uh. Don't worry about this one because it's actually some uh, some some error message. But the thing is that okay, now I have a program. I use quick sort on CPU, and it takes about thirty eight seconds on the sorting part, right? And uh, apparently, you know that uh, this is the most time consuming part, uh, and it's easy to tell. But it's also interesting to. S but most of the time, if you don't have this kind of a tool, right, then uh, how are you going to know? Right, so then uh, go back to this one, right? So this is the gprop, right? It will generate an output file called gmon.out, and if you directly read it, you are not going to understand what it's talking about. So uh, what you will have to do is that you have to do gprop and hybrid sort the CPU, which is the program we just run, and gmon.out. Uh, and then you are start go you will see this one, right? And it's definitely not something readable again. Right, so that's uh, so that's uh, typically all you need to do is uh, you have to uh, you have to you have to uh, pipe it to a file. Then you will figure out that it will show you. Wow! So you know we know quick sort is a very uh, is the most time time consuming process in this program, but this profiling tool actually tells you right like. Uh, like here, let me see. Okay, 
like the compare, the comparison part is actually the most time consuming thing in in a GPro, uh, in a in a sorting process, right? So now if you are thinking about can I make a processor or can I write a program that uh, improve the sorting on the CPU, then comparison is actually the main thing that I should focus on. Right? Then uh, it gives you some idea about how to optimize your program. Right? So that's, a, that's, a, that's an example of using a profiling tool. Now, uh, another demo I want to show you about is this. So I have a, so, so yeah, we just saw the, the, the program of sorting. Now, um, oh. okay, okay, so, okay. so yeah, we just brought up this sorting, right? And um, you know, sorting is very useful, right? As you can see, like in the first demo, if you get your data, uh, the very first demo in this uh, this class is that if you can get your data sorted, you can change the behavior afterwards and make your program faster. So that's why sorting is a very important algorithm uh, that every algorithm class should tell you how to sort efficiently. Right? I, I have no objection on that. Right? And because sort, sorting is really, really important. And in fact, in a lot of data analytics, in a lot of, uh, uh, lot of uh, uh, database-related stuff, if you can get your data sorted, it will make your life a lot easier and make your performance a lot better. So now I'm interested, since sorting is so important, right? I want to improve the process of sorting. And so now uh, we just had a program that uh, on my computer, it takes about, um, okay, it takes, uh, you, just, you guys just saw it, right? Hopefully you still remember, right? Uh, we spent about 3.5 seconds on getting the file input and we spent about 37 seconds in sorting this uh, one billion of numbers, right? So now, it's so slow, right? It takes about more than half minute to sort. So now my question, uh, so now I'm going to show you that with the new technology, right? We can actually make the sorting better. So the new technology, uh, not too difficult to imagine would be use GPU. So now I'm going to use the GPU to sort those numbers. All right, so I'm now, what, right? It only takes about half second, right? 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 It only takes about half second, right? And of course, there are some other overheads like upload, download, meaning that I have to uh, copy the data into the GPU and copy the data out of the GPU. That's about another second, right? So if you edit this up all together, you will figure out that, well, use the GPU to sort it. The whole thing takes about 5.2 seconds. And within this 5.2 seconds, only one second is spent on the GPU, right? So now, the question is that after you optimize your program, right? So now, we use MDOS, we'll apply an optimization. Then uh, we focus on sort, and we use something called GPU to implement a sort, right? And uh, we figure out that, uh, 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 with, uh, uh, after you use GPU, the sort is a lot faster. Right? It used to be 37 seconds and now it's half second, so almost like a 70 times speed up. Then, well, no, this is one, right? So about like, okay, 30 times speed up, right? Then, should I keep focusing on the sorting or something else? file input. Yeah, the file input, right? Because it used to be the sorting is the most time, uh, time consuming, right? And now, after you optimize the sort, the target change, right? So this demo is not just one, is not just telling you how effective G 
GPU is. But also give you another idea about why we have to always thinking about uh, always think about M DOS load. It's because the optimization is a moving target. So uh, one thing I do want to criticize uh, for a lot of our uh, uh, a lot of people in the research community or even in the industry is that people are so restricted to what they are they have been educated in the past but they they know MDOS law but they but uh, in the meantime they know MDOS law but they never reapply it uh, to other places so it used to be like a lot of people focusing on uh, like high performance computing or they focus on uh, the compute kernels and they make uh, the algorithm better, 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 and better on a problem that has been well optimized. So sorting is one of the examples that is no more the issue of the algorithm itself. It's more about the rest of the stuff, like the file input. Right. So now, if you really want to make a file input better, right? As we introduce, there's something called SSD. So now I have another script which I believe uh, I will run this stuff on an SSD, which I have a, a temp partition uh, running on an NVMe SSD. And let's see how fast the SSD can help us. So. Uh, Wow, with SSD, right? Your file input is going down from 3.5 to 0 0.24 seconds. And the sorting remains the same, right? Okay, so, but the total process is now only two seconds. As a company, as industry, every, every second is money. Right? So now, what should I work on? The SSD or the algorithm? The sorting. What do you guys think? The sorting again, right? So that's that. So so as you can see, right? M also is actually a moving target. Target is telling you that the performance optimization is a moving target, right? So this graph is actually going to show you, right? Um, in the very beginning, we sort. We we think sort is the most important issue, and then with GPU, we make sorting really small. Right, and now again with solid state drive, we make um, file IO a lot faster. But other things like the system software overhead or the sorting is again uh, the most important thing to work. So that's another implication of MDOS load is that the optimization is always a moving target. And these two graphs are showing are showing uh, the result that uh, we have differently in a different way. So this one is the baseline, uh, the original program uh, using CPU as the sorting uh, and the hardest drive for data storage. And we get speed up of one. So this is the baseline. And with GPU plus SSH uh, hardest drive, here is what we get. And then with solid state drive, wow, we get a lot, right? So uh, that's how you see like multiple optimization can work on the same program as well. But in the process, of that, if you draw the execution time breakdown in 100% like this, you will see uh, the most significant part changes always. Right? So it used to be the green part, and after applying the GPU, it becomes the blue part. And then uh, with GPU plus SSD, you will figure out others, which might be part of the system software overhead, would be the most uh, significant part to work with. So for example, do you have an efficient file system? Do you have an efficient operation? So those are the things that uh, you can you can you can you can observe that the most significant part always change, right? So um, it's always uh, it's always so so the, the thing is that right you have to revisit M DOS so every time after you apply an optimization to make sure that you are still on the right track. All right. So now. Although we focus on um, most common things, right? but sometimes in a world of politics, you always see that people care about um, uh, the voice of um, relatively smaller group of people because it's also important that 
when you optimize for the benefit of the most common group, you also need to make sure that this won't hurt the rest of it. And the reason why is because sometimes if you optimize the most common part, then it will bring side effects to the rest of the execution time. And same thing for everything in the world. So saying that, right, if um, I have a program that spent 90% in A, let's say A is like sorting, 10% in B, let's say B is like uh, something else, and assume an optimization can accelerate A by nine times, which is a lot. However, it can hurt B by 10 times, right? Which is also a lot, but we think that 10% is not a lot, right? So what we end up with, right? So if you make a calculation, you'll figure out the optimization in this way, we can make the old execution time of the 90% to be something like this. And for the 10%, it will become another thing like this. Then, if you add it up together, your new execution time will be 10% more than the original execution time. So this is an example that, you know, it seems like optimizing 90% of the case for the nine time is a good thing. However, it hurts another part by 10 times. And you saw that 10% is not going to hurt you a lot. But if you add it up together, it's actually bringing you slow down. Right. So in a lot of cases, we will be like that uh, when we are doing GPU computation. So previously you saw that GPU is really effective. However, a side effect that people always forget is that when you use GPUs, you have to copy data uh, from your host computer to the GPU memory. And if your algorithm is not going to speed up more than the side effect, then you are not going to get any benefit from it. Right, so that's another thing you have to be really careful about. Uh, don't hurt most uh, the non-common part too much. Okay, so, right, and uh, this is something missing in MDOS low, but you will be able to see that kind of discussion in the paper that we uh, assigned for the reading is that, you know, MDOS low itself doesn't uh, count the overhead and it doesn't bound to slow down. However, if you extend the MDOS law in a certain way, you are able to take that into consideration. And another thing which you guys might learn from that paper is that if I have parallel processing, if I have parallelism in my processing unit, uh, if I, I can also use MDOS law to gouge the performance scan that I'm able to get. Saying that, I have uh, so, and this is actually easy, right? So I have a fraction of time that is parallel, a parallelizable through uh, uh, a processing element. So I can say this is uh, a parallelizable part, right? And again, use MDOS, the simplest form is one over one minus a uh, parallelizable plus a parallelizable over n, right? And so if you have n processor, that's how you get the speed up. So, Using that knowledge, I have four statements here. I want you to go through and think about um, what, uh, what, what's, your, what, uh, what's your opinion on those.
All right, let's wrap up in 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. Okay, so for this question, I do see two popular answers. So why don't you discuss with your friend for another 90 seconds? Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. Okay. Ta -da. After discussion, well, more, more leaning towards C. Uh, some of you think it's B. So let's look at itch, right? Some of you are uh, interested about sharing your thoughts. Some of you. Okay. Place one was false because uh -huh. the performance has to be greater than the slowdown. It's not enough that the performance of the slowdown is bounded. If we have unlimited parallel, the performance of each piece does not matter as long as the performance slowdown on each piece is bounded. So you think it's incorrect? Yeah. How? Why? Because doesn't the slowdown have to be less than the performance scale? So when I say uh, the slowdown of each piece is bounded, yeah. what do you think that is? What what does that mean? You don't know? Yeah. Okay, so what's unbounded? Could be infinite. Could be infinite, right? Yeah. So in this problem, which one is unbounded? Like there is something unbounded. Okay, so uh, so for this question, right, we should remember the form of n dot or one minus f plus f over f, right? Yeah. So for uh, and also you have parallel, so it's like this. Do you agree with that? No, it's uh, it's times the Okay. Yeah, I right. agree with that. Yeah. Right. So if you if you read the paper, that's what the paper was telling you about. Right? So for for so for for this uh, revised equation, right? What's the course? The number of course, right? So 
So this could be infinite. Yeah. And this could be something that's a number, right? So let's say it's a constant. A one over C is a constant. Right? So what does that mean? It means it's correct. This is correct, right? So if you have unlimited parallelism, right, and even though each piece is slower, if you have sufficient amount of cores, you probably can still be faster. What? If your single core is pretty slow, that means it's going to be more difficult. Well, so, but that, that's, the, that's another thing. Right? So when you talk about schedule, but if your test is a long running one, the scheduling is not. You want too often. And if you only have this one particular problem, that's not uh, that's not the main issue. So for this one, it's really interesting, right? So if you have unlimited parallel, right? So yeah. If we have a station essentially being we have a limited number of cores. You have a limited number of cores or unlimited something that can parallelize. So here I'm going to be creative because I don't know what the unlimited parallel is be. Right? Like for example, quantum computing. Right? It's a it also kind of like a unlimited parallelism in a way that each qubit itself provides a limited, right? But the, the qubit itself is not, it's a single core provides a limited power. So, I will, I, so that's why I won't put it in a way saying that limited. There are some other student models that can provide a limited power with them to work in all courses. But uh, if it's a conventional architecture, yes, it's not. Right? So here's the thing, right? If you can make something that can provide you enormously large amount of parallelism, then even though each piece is slower, it will give you speed up. Right? So an example that I can show you is the GPU. So we, we just saw the power of GPU, right? And if you look at uh, the frequency of a process, uh, of a microprocessor, right? like for your CPU, it can go up to 3.7 uh, gigahertz. This is a processor that I am using to run the sorting algorithm. So it's a 3.7 gigahertz processor. And let's see how fast is the GPU. So, okay, let's do it. Hey. So for the GPU, right, it's actually the maximum clock is only 2.1, right? So each GPU is in fact slower than your CPU. But what you just think is that the performance of running sorting on GPU is a lot faster on, than the CPU. Yes, because the GPU, it has thousands of these processing elements running at the speed of 2.1 gigahertz. Compared against the CPU, you only have eight cores, although each of them running at 3.7. It also justifies the answer why people are sticking for more cores rather than faster cores these days is because if I can parallelize my program, and then you will figure out that if I can parallelize my program, is a really big assumption that sometimes really hard to achieve. But uh, the why people try to produce and pursue the way of multi cores or like thousands of cores, which we call many cores, is because they believe if one day we can fully parallelize our program 
then the parallelism actually uh, is the determining factor, right? So the first one is correct. The second one, with unlimited amount of parallel, however, single core performance does not matter anymore. Correct or not? No, right? So the 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 the, the first thing, the first statement needs to be hold is when the slowdown of each piece is bounded. But this one is saying that, you know, if we have a, a, a significant amount of force, then each performance doesn't matter. And the other thing is that, right, if you look at, uh, if you look at this problem again, right, the F parallelizable can never be one, right? So at some point, if the uh, even though like we make the f parallelizable be be uh, be as close to one as possible, there are still factors depending on the performance of uh, a single core because there are parts of the performance still non parallelizable. So and as we as we mentioned, if you keep applying optimization in M dot, so eventually that non parallelizable part. Will be the determining factor of your So single core still matters. So that's why that's what Intel tried to tell you. That's why we, we are still producing better process. Single core does matter in many cases. Because your speed up at the end will be determined by one minus f. And um, now the third statement with unlimited amount of parallel hardware units. The maximum speed up will be bounded by the fraction of parallel part. Agree? Yes, right? With unlimited amount of parallel hardware units, the effect of scheduling and data exchange overhead is minor. That's not true, right? Like, as you said, like, uh, if I, um, those are the other things, right? The, the, the non parallelizable stuff, right? So, uh, if that part is significant, then, uh, and that part is typically not parallel, right? Because there are so many, like, uh, if you if you took operating system before, you know there are blocking, right? There are mutual exclusion, there are lots of things that force your program to be zero. So those are non parallelizable parts, and which make uh, the effect of scheduling, and again, as I just showed you, right? Like when we perform the sorting on GPU, we spend 0 0.48 seconds on sorting itself. But if you add up the time we spend on moving data between the host and the process, uh, the GPU, which is the upload time and the download time, you will figure out it's also about 0 0.5 seconds. So this is the new overhead that will be introduced. In well, so uh, although the first statement sounds generally true. But this effect is something that you can uh, not underestimate it. If you cannot paralyze it, you cannot deal with it. Right? And this is also the thing that makes the slowdown of each piece slightly uh, a, a lot significant. Right? So two of them are correct. Right? And this is another implication of this also. So uh, give you an example of how uh, parallel is going to uh, parallelism is going to affect. Uh, there is an interesting sorting algorithm called Betonic sort. We would never do it on GPU and CPU because if you look at the complexes, it's n log square, right? Even merge sort, right? N log n is better than Betonic sort, right? So, however, if you look at the algorithm of merge sort, it's basically like a, a tree structure in a way that we build a merge sort tree. So initially, you can definitely sort each piece, right? And then uh, parallelize it, right? So that's the idea of merge sort, right? But at the end, when you want to sort the big array, you will see bigger array, you will see the parallelism start to decrease. Uh, however, if you look at the Betonic sort algorithm, if you're interested, you can definitely go through it. Right. So although it takes more steps, uh, more comparisons, but if you look at the, the comparison, the amount of comparison it does, it's always the same. Uh, it's always the same. 
So in this way, and they don't, uh, it's not just always the same, but another benefit of it is that uh, they never have to cross-reference data and they never have to synchronize data. When, 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 for each step. So this algorithm is definitely more parallelizable than uh, the merge sort problem. So that's why if you see the GPU sorting algorithm implementation, it's typically, it's typically not those involved in algorithm that you know of, but instead they are, they are aiming at this kind of algorithm, although the complexity is higher, however, it allows uh, the hardware to be uh, the code the itself to be more parallel. So that's another proof of statement. Uh, we just seen that um, instead of uh, searching for the most efficient algorithm to minimize the amount of time spent in each uh, parallelizable piece of code, we would sacrifice the amount of time on each piece, but searching for uh, more parallelism to maximize the usage of your hardware. So that's another sub about uh, the, the, the end of the All right, color rate four. Still about parallelism, right? So we see, uh, so still about parallelism, right? So what we have learned from, 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 from this, uh, this question is that if we can build a process with unlimited parallelism, the complexity doesn't matter uh, as long as the algorithm can utilize all power. Is that true? Isn't that true? Right? So if the complexity, as, as long as it's bounded, right, is not taking an infinite, right? and as long as you can build a processor with unlimited power, complexity doesn't matter anymore. Right? CS217A. 218 is no not important at all. Right? So uh, it's and, and and we just mentioned quantum computing, right? So that's why uh, a lot of people are saying that uh, in a world of quantum computing, it's only it's going to be the end of uh, algorithm. Because quantum computing is something that uh, you can you can you can think that they can generate uh, unlimited number of parallelism within a given amount of time. But fortunately, fortunately, uh, quantum computing is not fully accurate. It's still an approximation result at this point. So, whew, we are still safe, and we still need to learn algorithms. And um, well, so another thing which apply the color form we learned here is that um, because the complexity uh, is less important than parallelism due to the limitation of the processing uh, capability nowadays. So we start to have parallel programming model that trades the computation efficiency of each piece of code with the parallelism. So one uh, is the, shoot. One is the betonic sort that you just said. Okay, let me let me turn off my my messenger really quick. Okay. Sorry about that. Too many things you have to you have to remember. Most it's, it's kind of like Murphy's law, right? Most of the time, I feel like I'm isolated people. That typically I don't need to worry about this. But whenever you forget to turn it off during the class, it starts to show up. Okay, so color report, right? So so there are some like parallel programming framework like Mutani Sword or. Uh, Map reduce. If you learn map reduce, you'll figure out that the, the, the overhead of executing the computation of each piece of in map reduce is a lot higher. However, because you can use thousands of machines, thousands of cores to perform your task, so that's why uh, most of the time map reduce could be faster in this way, right? So the future trend of software application design is seeking for more power than this, rather than lower the computational complexity. So that's another thing that you should also keep in mind. Okay, another corollary that also about m is that single core performance still matters, right? Although 
uh, John Hennessy and David Harrison say that uh, single core is not getting any faster. However, it's almost impossible to parallelize your program in 100%. And even though your algorithm can be parallelized in 100%, there are still serializable parts. Uh, well, all serialized parts, like we just mentioned, the data exchange, uh, the system software management, they can only be serialized because of the nature of itself. Right? So single core performance still matters. Right? So, 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 and sometimes, right, like if you trade too much about the parallelism with the single core performance, you are still going to get slow down. So that's another thing you have to remember as well. And that's something we should learn from also. Now, we still have a few minutes left, uh, and I do want to uh, bring into this issue, and hopefully I can uh, tell you about fair comparison, and that's one of the reasons we bring, uh, we bring uh, great pretenders in the beginning of the lecture. So you will see uh, a lot of performance metrics that the industry used to fool you guys. So one of the things is like T flops. Right? So when you are buying buying a, a, a gaming machine, right, gaming a game console, this is what others will tell you. Like Xbox One tell you we have uh, six teraflops. PS4 tell you to, oh no, it should be PS5, right? But I didn't get one, so somebody can tell. And PS4 giving you like T uh, four T flops, and G Force give you like fourteen T flops. But do you feel the visual effect you receive is better on your PC or on your PS4? Or you don't feel it's different? What? It depends. It depends, right? So, good, good answer, right? It depends, right? So, which means that T plus doesn't really tell you anything, right? And the reason why is that, again, as we mentioned, the, the the performance equation is execution time equal to instruction count times CPI times cycle time. And if you look at how T plus is calculated, it comes from the percentage of uh, uh, floating point instructions times uh, the number of the total instructions in your program times 10 to the 12 and over the execution time. And if you keep iterating on this, right, the execution time is IC times uh, CPI times CT, you'll figure out that in its final equation. The instruction count is gone, right? So one of the big factors in your program is gone. So that's why everything that's related to, to the total number of instructions is now reflected in T plus. So you could have a program that generates thousand times more floating point instructions with a very high T plus, but turns out that uh, because you have thousand times more instructions, so you are still slow. Right? So that's why T plus is not fair. Right? So another thing which occurs pretty often nowadays in AI is also the uh, in AI, people like to use a trick called uh, inference per second, right? And, uh, well, I guess uh, we can talk about this in the next lecture. So we can bring this up uh, in the next lecture and because I think this, this is a very important part of the, uh, of the learning. But before you leave the classroom, there are still quite a few things that I want to let you know. So we will have a reading quiz due next Monday related to memory hierarchy. And I will put up the assignment one uh, online by tonight, and you should have about a week uh, to finish the assignment one. And the assignment one uh, is mainly based on the performance equation and endorse also. What you have learned today is good enough for you to complete assignment one. And next Monday, I will tell you how is that treat for you guys with different performance metrics, and we are going to talk about memory hierarchy. Yes, one minute. Uh, the the assignment one will be due next. All right. After that, enjoy the rest of your week, and I will see you next Monday. You too. <laughs>
I was in some kind of team, like some super computing team to attend the competition, like a ASC, ASC. Uh, say again. Do, do we have some super computing team to attend the competition, like ASC and ASC? I'm just interesting about it because I attended the ASC. Huh. Yeah, I. It is very related to what you talk about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, not not as far as I know. Uh, for example, uh, the ASC is the Asia Supercomputing Competition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, usually, the best, the first, uh, the first question is regularly, which is uh, HPL and HPCG benchmark. Mm -hmm. You need to build a machine within three thousand watts mm -hmm. to get a uh, higher, ah. to get the best. Uh, Result of HPCG and HPL uh -huh, test. For uh -huh, example, uh -huh. like a hundred tera block. I see. And the second question is a uh, scientific uh, program optimization. Huh. The, they will give you a very old uh, scientific program. For example, uh -huh. the weather prediction program uh -huh. written by Fortune, and you need to optimize it. For example. Uh, in the baseline, you need uh, about 30 hours to run the whole program, and after op optimization, maybe you run it in one hour or two hours. And this is the second question. Mm -hmm. and, the sec and the third question is the hot spot in our real life. For example, in, 20 in 2018, the third program is a machine learning related program. So you'll be given a Machine learning software, and you need to optimize it. Oh. So 